What's up, Data Pipeliners? Welcome back to another episode on Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. In today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how you can hook up your data pipeline with Flask and deploy it into Docker so that you can make remote calls to your data pipeline. So let's go ahead and get started. So in order to accomplish this task, what we're going to do is we're going to be using Kedro Docker and Flask in order to create a Flask application that we can deploy into Docker. The pipeline that we're going to be using today is, of course, our example Iris dataset pipeline with a few tweaks. The first change that we made here is inside of the data science node, I've modified the report accuracy function to return an accuracy value. The other change that I made to the pipeline is I added an accuracy output data set to the report accuracy node. This accuracy data set is an in-memory data set. Now, in order to get this pipeline running, let's go ahead and install a few of the requirements. I'm going to create a new virtual environment here. Activating the virtual environment, I'm going to do pip install for Kedro, pip install for Kedro pandas, pip install flask, and pip install Kedro docker. And now that we've installed all those tools, I'm going to reconfigure my PyCharm interpreter to use the Flask example environment. And now that that's ready, I'm going to create a new Flask application. So of course, we're going to import from Flask, Flask itself. We're going to create a new app and we're going to call it Flask name. And we're going to define an out, a, a route. It's going to be a home route. And we're going to just return a hello world. This is just going to be in order to make sure that our Flask application is working correctly. Then I'm going to check if the name of this module is main. We're going to run the application. The host I'm going to set as 0, 0.0.0. .0. And so here we have a very simple Flask application. Running this file, I'm going to type in Python Flask entry. Now I'm going to do a quick curl to 0.0.0, .0, .0 5000, and we get a hello world. So we know that the Flask application works. Now I'm going to add in a route that will point to Kedro. The route is just going to be a simple run route. And what we're going to do is we're going to import the load context and we're going to load the local context. Next, we're just going to call run on this context and we're going to get a returned value. We're just going to return the output here. Now, if you recall, if you run a context by itself inside of code like this, it's going to find the very last node in your pipeline outputting to an in-memory data set, and it's going to return that in-memory data set to us. Now, if you recall, we modified the pipeline to output an accuracy in-memory data set. We're actually going to get that accuracy data set back from the pipeline itself. Let's go ahead and give this guy a try. We're going to restart the Flask application. I'm going to do another curl to the root and I'm going to do a curl to run. So when we do this curl, we should get back a JSON object. And I'm going to just pipe that into JQ. And there you have it. We have our accuracy output, which comes from our pipeline. Something else that you can do here is you can actually add in extra parameters. Now, for example, inside of our pipeline, we do have the example test data ratio parameter. Let's go ahead and make that available to the Flask API. We can do this by adding in a very simple extra path here with a parameter type and the parameter name. It's going to be called ratio. It's going to be passed into the run. And inside of the load context, we're going to pass in extra params. And these extra params are going to include example test data ratio. And that's going to be the ratio. So this extra param is going to override whatever is inside of the parameters.yaml file. So now I'm going to restart the Flask application one more time. And inside of our curl command, instead of doing run alone, I'm going to pass in 0.99. That's going to be our test data ratio. We're going to hit enter. And so running with 0.99, we see that we get a different accuracy than before. Obviously, we don't want to have this kind of ratio for our, tra for our training, but we can easily change that. And let's try doing 0.11. 0.11 gets us an accuracy of 1. What do you know? And so there you have it, a very simple API for your Ketro pipeline. Now what we're going to do is we're going to deploy this application into Docker. 
Pedro has a Docker plugin that allows you to create a Docker image from your Kedro pipeline. Stopping the Flash application for now, I'm going to clear and I'm going to use Kedro Docker init to initialize all the Docker files that we're going to need. This includes the .docker ignore file, the Docker file itself, and also the .divecl file. Back in PyCharm, we're going to modify the Docker file as well as the Docker ignore file. The Docker file is prepared to run Kedro, the pipeline itself, but instead of running pi the pipeline, I'm going to want it to run the Flask application. So we're just going to leave a note here, expose 5000, and then we're going to add Python Flask entry.py. Next, we're going to remove the data folder from the .ignore file because this example project keeps data inside of the data folder, we want to make sure that we copy that data into our image. And that's being done by the copy command here. Now, finally, we're going to want to go back to our terminal and do a pip freeze and write out a new requirements file to the source slash requirements. That's because by default, Kedro does not come with Kedro Docker nor the Flask requirements inside of that file. And if you look at the Docker file itself, we do install using the requirements txt. So now that that's all set in stone, let's go ahead and do Kedro Docker build. And this will begin the building of a Docker image based on the Kedro project and its name. When we do a Docker build, it's going to use a Docker base image that it has a Python version equivalent to the Python version that we're using to run Ketro build. After a minute or two, the Docker build image will complete. And now what we can do is we can actually run that image file. And so the image file is going to be named the same name as the Ketro project. And in this case, it's Flask example. Of course, we want to expose the 5000 port for Flask and running docker run dash p5000, we see we get the same logging message that we did when we ran our Flask example. And doing a curl to the local host 5000, we get, again, the output that we're looking for. So this is a very simple way to turn Kedro into a web application with an available REST API. Of course, this is not production ready. For example, we're not using something like Nginx or G Unicorn to run multiple instances of the Flask application, nor are we using multiple instances of the Flask application via Docker, but you get the idea here on how you can deploy a very simple API. And also, what you would need to take advantage of here is something like a shared data lake, for example, S3 or Azure's own um, data lake data storage system. And that way you wouldn't have to copy your data into the Docker image. But because we're using a very local example, we did copy our data into the Docker image. So thanks again to the Kedro community for giving me this suggestion for a video. If you guys haven't joined up yet, make sure you stop by the community. We've just opened a Portuguese language section. And of course, we have our Japanese language section still available. And everything else is in English. So I hope you guys learned something today. Thank you very much for joining me. Make sure that you enjoyed this content. Button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.